So last year there was an article in the cut about rich women buying fake Hermes bags and I feel like it set the luxury community on fire. I think before this the perception was that only poor people bought fake bags but these women were upwardly mobile, a lot of them very very rich. They were going out of their way to buy fake bags especially Hermes Birkins. It was jaw dropping. So the counterfeit market is a multi-billion dollar industry. If you're like myself and you buy luxury bags and sneakers resale, fakes are just a topic that you can't ignore. The women of the cut article felt that fake bags had a place in their handbag collection. It made me wonder, is there any place for fake bags in my collection or others? Before we get started, let's define some topics. First up are authentic bags. These are the bags you get directly from the brand or an authorized retailer, not reseller, retailer. In my opinion, the only way you know a bag is 100% authentic is if it comes from the brand. And it hurts me to say this because I buy a lot of my bags and shoes resale, and I'm usually 99.9% .9 sure that my bags are authentic, but since I'm not buying them directly from the brand, Brand, I can't say with 100% certainty that everything is authentic. So next up are replicas or dupes. Before I started my YouTube channel, I conflated dupes, replicas, counterfeits, fakes, whatever. I have since learned that there is a difference. There are replicas and there are counterfeit items. Because replicas are what most people call dupes. They're often inspired by the authentic item, but they don't have the branding of the item. For example, before I bought the Bottega Veneta pouch, I ended up buying a dupe at Amazon Bottega Veneta bags don't have a lot of branding. There is a Bottega Veneta label inside, but pretty much it's very nondescript. The dupe that I bought had no branding. It looked almost exactly like this and it was made out of leather. It wasn't a high quality leather. Truthfully, it left me wanting more, so I ended up buying this bag. Dupes, aka replicas, aren't illegal because they're not violating the copyright of the original brand. Most of the time, replicas are like right on the line. For a lot of people, they give them the feeling of owning the item without having to spend the money. Currently, if I have a question about whether or not I'm gonna like a higher end item. I tend to buy a dupe and play around with it. It does give me an impression of how owning the item would be, so I do like to use them in that way. And last are counterfeit and fake items. The difference between dupes and replicas and counterfeit and fake items is that fake items always have the brand of the authentic item and they try to give you the impression that they are authentic. When most people think of fakes, they really think of really bad quality items, things you get from Canal Street. I grew up in Phoenix and we had swap meets. Swap meets are like open air markets. I remember growing up, there was a song called Swap Meet Louis. If you went to a swap meet, there was so much fake Louis Vuitton, specifically Louis Vuitton monogram canvas. So the cut article starts off talking about a woman named Lisa. She's 38, lives in Manhattan, and has like this super rich friend. The super rich friend has a $10 million home in the Hamptons, flies private, has a massive Birkin collection, and Lisa just assumed that everything was real until one day the friend let her in on the secret that the, her Birkins were fake. I guess she got them at some Tupperware party. <laughs> I'm serious, I have not heard that term in decades. Once Lisa found out that her friend's Birkins were fake, she was invited to a Tupperware party and she entered this world. In the article, most of the women are white. It's not said, but the white is silent. The main reason that most of these women don't want to buy real Birkins is they feel like it's a waste of their money. I was initially a little bit confused about why buy a Birkin if you don't think it's a good use of your money. These women are rich and in their social circle, having a Birkin is a status symbol. I wouldn't even say it's a status symbol, it's a symbol of belonging. So if you don't have a Birkin in these circles, you don't belong. So women feel the pressure to buy them. I get that. I still feel some kind of way. These women are very rich. An $11,000 Birkin is not going to hurt them financially, but they feel like their money could be better spent. I feel like everybody has different reasons for buying bags. This article kind of touched on privilege, wealth, a lot of layers, but essentially the women that they interviewed felt like they were the working rich, meaning they weren't born rich or married into money. They're basically new money. One thing I appreciated about this article is it changed the face of who buys fake bags. Because most of the time, when you think of somebody buying a fake bag, you think of somebody who doesn't make very much money. You don't think of a white woman with an annual income of over a million dollars buying fake bags, but that's exactly who is buying these bags. Another thing they mentioned was that the quality of these Birkin bags was much higher than your traditional swap meet Louis. When most counterfeit items are not handcrafted out of the finest leather, they are made out of substandard materials in a factory in China. The biggest thing about these fake Birkins is that they're made out of high quality materials and they're often handmade. Most people that are buying fake items are going to Canal Street or I think it's called DH Gate or D Gate. I don't know what the name of it is, but you know what I'm talking about. They're going to those types of websites. These women have found fine handbag artisans that are willing to make them really, really good replicas. These fakes are so good that the women feel comfortable going around other women who have real Birkins and not being found out. The price point is also higher. Usually if you're buying a fake bag, it's maybe a hundred dollars, maybe a couple hundred dollars. These women are spending thousand dollars on their bags. They're sourcing it. In order to source fakes of this quality, these 
these women are having to go through kind of extraordinary lengths. After reading this article, I don't know if I will feel comfortable buying a Hermes Birkin on the resale market. The resale market is already bad enough with fakes. Now to hear that there are wealthy people who basically are buying fake Birkins, carrying them around. Nobody plans to sell these, but let's say somebody dies, a family member inherits it and thinks that it's a real Birkin because they haven't been told it's fake and they sell it and it actually passes authentication. And also what's to stop a person who thinks that their fake Birkin is good enough to pass muster from selling it to a place like The Real Real, which isn't always the best with their authentication. I'm into sneakers and popular video is people buying really, really good fake sneakers and trying to sell them on GOAT, StockX, or even your mom and pop sneaker resale store. We all know fakes exist. I try not to watch them because I don't want to be triggered. I don't be mad. I purchased enough from the resale market to know that I'm going to feel some kind of way if I see somebody success successfully sell a fake item to StockX. Just because I know that could be me on that other side. Mm -mm, nope, can't do it. I do wanna buy a Birkin, probably a black Birkin with gold hardware and maybe that gold color with gold hardware. All the other details can be sussed out later. I thought that maybe I could buy one retail and maybe one resale, but now I'm like, mm -mm. I'm not buying fake bags at all. Like the Birkins that I want tend to be more expensive on the resale market. So it behooves me to buy them from Hermes. I will get them cheaper than I will on the resale market. Adding in the factor of there are an unknown number of really, really good super fake Birkins, nah. Not the kid, I can't do it. As I mentioned before, I do buy dupes when I have questions about whether or not I'm, I would like the real version of a certain bag. For my Bottega Veneta pouch, that was definitely a question because the majority of my bags are shoulder bags. I do have a couple of clutches. I just wasn't sure how much I was gonna like this dumpling style clutch. After I bought the dupe, I wore it one time and I was like, oh no. I have to get the real one because I love the way it fit, but also the dupe, the leather was really mid. I'd seen the real bag in person and once I was playing around with the dupe, it was like, it doesn't even compare. I want the real thing. So that's how I get down. I recently saw a video by Caitlin. I can't pronounce her last name. She's an Australian YouTuber and she was in the market for Mini Kelly. Mini Kellys are super, super cute, but I could definitely see those being bags that could drive you crazy. Most people keep their Mini Kellys open. They're very small in terms of what they fit. The Mini Kelly is such a vibe and I see so many people carrying them. It's a bag that I would definitely have to buy a dupe of in order to validate that I wanted to spend that much money. And so that's what Caitlin did. She said she wore it around the house. There's no Hermes near her. And so for the bag she wanted, she knew that she wasn't gonna be able to get it at the Hermes store. So one does not go into Hermes and ask to try on a Mini Kelly. They're not gonna let you do that. If you wanna try on a Birkin, a Mini Kelly, you need to go to a resale store like The Real Real Fashion File. She lives in Australia in a city where they don't have those types of stores. Stores, so this was her best bet. Birkins and Mini Kellys are quota bags. And so those are the bags that you have to spend a certain amount of money. They're mostly given to people who have a history with a specific essay. I've heard different numbers to meet the quota. I don't know what the number is. Caitlin felt like she wasn't able to get this bag at Hermes. She looked at the prices for resale and they were ridiculous. I believe she said it was gonna be around 30,000 Australian dollars. Eek. I don't know what that conversion is, but that's still a lot of money. It was a no brainer for her to buy a bag that allowed her to try it out beforehand. And I totally understand. I think this was actually the best reason I have ever heard of anybody buying a fake bag. The judgy part of me does not like people buying fake bags. Fake bags are usually funding something illegal. Let's just be truthful about that. The people that are making them are more than likely working in sweatshops. There's just a lot of reasons why you shouldn't buy fake bags. There's not very many good dupes of the mini Kellys. She also said she didn't leave the house with it, so I'm fine with that. When it comes to fake bags, what Caitlyn did doesn't bother me as much. Also, people who buy fake bags and even sneakers and are upfront about them being fake, I don't really care. I have a cousin, he only buys fake Nike. The thing about him though, is if you comment or ask him about it, he's very forthright and says they're fake. He's not the dude that's trying to say that he has like a $30,000 sneaker collection and all of them are fake. The Reddit ladies in the cut article, they are doing that for the most part. People who buy fake items and are forthright about it and people who buy fake items in order to figure out if they want the authentic item, those are the two areas where I'm not so judgy about people buying fake luxury items. Let me know what you think. I wanna buy a Birkin, but I'm not sure exactly about the size. I'm torn between uh, the 30 and the 35. I see myself in the future buying a dupe that's very similar to the Birkin 30 to see if it's the right size for me. If based on a dupe, I'm not convinced of, but that the Birkin 30 is the right size for me, I may buy a fake bag that I just wear at home. It's definitely not gonna be a thousand dollar rep Reddit lady Birkin. <laughs> It more than likely is gonna be a hundred dollar one, but it's gonna be one that mimics the size. I will never leave the house with it because 
I'm not a fake bag person. Here's the thing, I don't run in circles where there's an expectation of me carrying a Birkin. I want a Birkin for myself. I will probably will only carry it on special occasions. That's it. I do wanna make sure that I'm buying the right size. And so let's say I, I were to buy a fake Birkin 30 to see if I wanted a real one. After I was done with that, I probably wouldn't throw it away. I would use it as a burner. When I say burner, I mean similar to like those burner phones that you pay as you go, can throw them away, you don't really care. When it comes to jewelry, I love a stunt double. I love a paid actor. I don't know if I'm gonna do it with bags. I watched a video where a girl said she bought a fake Dior book tote to figure out if she liked the style. I definitely understand because that bag, the handle, the weight, one. She ended up buying a fake one. She liked it so much she ended up buying a real one she now uses her fake one when she goes to the beach i love that idea let me know in the comments what you think about buying fake bags i think if i ever bought a fake item in order to figure out if i want a real item that item would later become a burner that's just how it's gonna be that's how my mind thinks that's i think the only place that i think fakes would fit in my collection let me know what you think so those are my thoughts about buying fake bags. Buying luxury handbags is really, really difficult. If you're interested in buying your first Chanel bag, I've linked a video on which Chanel bags you should buy first. All right, see you next time. Bye.